First of all, appreciate being here. Uh, what a great opportunity to, to work with somebody like Shelf Reliance. You know, that's a, it's a fantastic company. I've been trying to, to get them to pull the trigger on the volcano, uh, and, and we finally were able to make that work out, and we're excited to, to be able to work with Shelf Reliance. So um, many of you probably have heard of the volcano before, my guess is, if maybe a little bit. We're a Utah company. Uh, the product's actually been around for about 20 years, um, and it was actually manufactured uh, right here years and years ago and and um, so a lot of people in, in the Utah and in the West are, are pretty familiar with the volcano. Um, about five years ago we made some changes to the volcano that really uh, kind of set us apart and, and made us really uh, able to transition into the emergency preparedness space and as I uh, talk about some of the features here you'll, you'll see why they're applicable to emergency preparedness. Um, so I'll go ahead and, and begin by, just by showing you what the product is itself. Uh, when you first see it, it'll be in a box and it'll, it'll come in the case just like this uh, that you can see here. Um, and then, let me start right from scratch here. So you're going to see there are three sets of grills, and I'll explain all those in a moment. And then, of course, there's the uh, stove itself. And this is the, the Volcano collapsible version. We have a collapsible version, and then we have the original version, which doesn't collapse. I didn't bring that with us because we're, we're, uh, it's, it's not near as, as um, useful for emergency preparedness because it's bulky and hard to deal with. So we're going to work with the collapsible version today. And it comes in two models, uh, one with propane and one without propane. And uh, you'll, you'll see how that uh, works here in a moment as well. But uh, when, it, when it comes in the box, you'll see all these different features. Basically, everything you see here, including the bag which it comes with, uh, which isn't very common to have a product come with a nice carry case, so uh, we're happy to include that. Um, and then when you get it, the first thing you want to do is obviously open it up and play with it, right? So just go ahead and grab anywhere on this bell. It's best if you use one hand and, and, hand, and grab it in the middle, and then you want to lift straight up. Now, a lot of people kind of want to be ginger and careful, uh, but it works by gravity, so it's best if you, you know, are a little aggressive and just go ahead and lift straight up, and it pops right open which is real easy. And then the first thing people want to do is, well, if it pops open, it must fall down, you know, obviously. But you can't collapse it by pushing on the top. Obviously, that would be uh, not a good thing. So the way it's engineered is to collapse it, all you do is go ahead and pick up anywhere on the bottom, and that's going to collapse it right down to the uh, storable size. Once again, grab anywhere. You can even grab just along this top rim. Just lift it right up, and it's ready to go. And this is a very sturdy unit. We have some uh, pictures on our website. We've uh, we got a picture of one guy that works for us. He's about 375 pounds, just a giant young kid going to college, standing right on top of the grill, and it's just holding up no problem. So it's a very tough unit, um, and it's, it's something that if you take care of it, just like anything else, it has the potential to last your lifetime. Like I said, we've been around for 20 years, and uh, every once in a while we'll go to a place and somebody will say, well, hey, I've, I've got one of those 20 years ago. You know, we've had that thing. We use it every year. And it always amazes me that they're able to uh, last that long. But the truth is, is they're, they're very durable. And uh, if, you, if you care for them, you know, you don't want to leave it outside. Uh, but if you take care of it, it's something that can last, last your lifetime. Uh, and especially for emergencies, you want something that you can put away and maybe not use for five or 10 years or even until, you know, you have to use it. But you want to know it's going to be reliable and it's going to be there when you do need it and the volcano will give you that reliability. Um, so the next thing you'll notice are these series of, of uh, grills, and then we have a propane burner if you have the propane model. Um, and I'll show you kind of how to set all these things up. So first of all, if, you're gonna, if you don't have the propane model, this is what you'll get. You'll get these grills and the, and the stove and the, and the um, bag. And you won't, will not have the burner piece. Uh, so if you're using charcoal or wood, you take the smallest grate, you can see there's quite the size difference. You take the smallest grate and put it in the bottom of the grill. Let me see if I can kind of show you that. You see it sits actually about an inch up off the bottom pan of the volcano. And the reason why it does that is there is a series of vents down here. I'm not sure if you can see that. But there's a series of vents in the bottom of the pan which allow the air to actually come into the volcano. You see all these kind of crazy holes around the outside. Well, that serves multiple purposes. One, it helps keep it cool, but second, that's actually where the air comes in. So the air is going to come in around that outside, and then it's channeled down through, the, through this vent system along the bottom, and that's where you are able to then control 
how much air comes into your fuel source. So if you're doing charcoal and you want to turn down the heat, all you do is cut off the air a little bit. Uh, same with wood. Propane is, is a little different. And then if you want to increase the heat, you open up that air and uh, more air will get in causing more heat to be made. Um, and so your vent system is beneath your fuel source. So what that means is the air is going to come in underneath and then it's going to go to your fuel and then right up to what you're cooking. And because of the way it moves air, first of all, I can cook right on top of this table. I can cook on a plastic table, tailgate, whatever the case may be, because the air is coming underneath and it's going straight up. Uh, so it's safe. Second of all, it's extremely efficient in the way it cooks. Uh, because of the way it's moving air, you're not losing heat out the bottom and you're not losing heat out the sides. It's channeling that heat directly to what you're cooking. So for instance, if you were doing a Dutch oven, you can put 10 briquettes down there, 10, 12 charcoal briquettes is all. Uh, and then you can go ahead and put your Dutch oven in, and that's going to heat your entire Dutch oven with that few briquettes. And that is mainly due to the fact that it's all contained and is being channeled to exactly where you need it to go. Um, and I'll, I'll talk more about Dutch ovens here in a moment. Uh, so anytime you're using charcoal or wood, you're going to put it on top of that bottom plate um, for general cooking, especially with Dutch oven. However, there is another option for you with the volcano that um, you may not see with some other cooking utilities. If you are saying, if you wanted to grill with charcoal, so you'd put your food up here obviously, sometimes because we have you know, eight inches of space between the charcoal and the uh, actual grilling surface, it requires an ad additional briquettes because of the space. So if you want to cut down on the number of briquettes you use, you can actually put that middle, middle pan in, and then you can put your briquettes right on top of that pan. So now instead of the briquettes being this far away, they're this far away. So that allows you to, to reduce the number of coals that, that it requires and in, increase the amount of heat. So there's multiple levels that you can place your fuel source, and there's multiple uh, options for you to, to cook with, multiple utilities of cooking. Um, and then if you have the propane model, which is by far our most popular, we sell about uh, 10 to 1, and I think you'll see with uh, Shelf Reliance will do the same thing, probably sell about 10 to 1 of the propane versus non-propane. So obviously the propane will do the same thing as the non-propane. It'll still cook with charcoal and wood, but then when you want to do propane, you go ahead and pull this bottom grate out, and then you find your propane burner, and you're going to slide it right inside of the volcano body. And you'll notice, let's see if I can show you, on the inside of the volcano there is one hole. So you can't really mess it up. So that one hole is where you're going to align your burner throat so that you can then hook up your burner. And now when you, when you get this hose out of the box, it's going to have this crazy uh, brass tube attached to it. That's something that we have to do because of uh, regulations. It's much easier if you go ahead and take that off. And so uh, what I've done is take one off because then you can kind of spin it and, and uh, direct it much easier. So what you want to do is stick your, your brass tube in through the hole and then uh, I wish I could show you a little better. So I'm just going to pretend that's inside. You just put that in, thread it in, and it's ready to go. And you, Used to be able to do that with our old burners, but it doesn't fit anymore. So slide that in, screw it on. The burner's ready. There are four notches in the bottom of the pan. That's to uh, position and hold that uh, cradle in place so it doesn't shift around. Uh, and then what you do is simply hook up your regulator hose to that brass tube. And it comes with two wrenches, so you can really tighten these as much as you want. Finger tight seems to work almost all the time for me, uh, but you can, you can uh, really cinch them down if you want to. And obviously, if you're, if you're trying to be really safe, it's very valuable to, to leak test all your connections. Uh, and then you can go ahead and hook this thing right up to your standard propane bottle. It comes ready to hook up to a standard propane bottle. Uh, but if, you, if you're uh, buying the kit at Shelf Reliance, it's also going to come with this adapter. What this allows you to do is hook into one of those little one pound bottles. So if you're going on a trip and you don't want to haul the big bottle, you just put that adapter in and then you can screw the little one pound Coleman bottles right onto that. So then you can use that fuel source as well, which once again, those are very easy to store in case uh, there's an emergency. Um, can you mix, uh, or adjust the air, air mixture? 
You don't have to, actually. Um, the burner itself, I'll show you that real quick. I'll show you how quick it is to disassemble. So the burner has one little slot right in the bottom, and that mixes the air just perfectly. Our old burners had a little adjustment that people kind of had to play with, and it was a hard time for somebody uh, who maybe wasn't real, real familiar with, with mixing air and gas. So we've, we've eliminated that. We've made it, made it so it's uh, kind of error-free, and it's going to burn just perfectly the first time you hook it up. Uh, and then once, once you have everything hooked up, I'll show you once again, then we have what's called a diffuser plate that you can put on top of your burner. That's the same plate I used to put in the middle to put charcoal on. Well, it, its actual purpose uh, that it was made for is to sit on top of that burner, and what that does is it helps diffuse the heat. So it spreads that flame out so you get a good even flame instead of the flame just coming right up in the middle. That helps to disperse that flame. Uh, and then, of course, you can you know, put your grill on there. You can grill. Uh, I don't know how many of you have ever used a, a wok Especially in the outdoors, it's not really associated with the outdoors much, but it's a fantastic way to cook outdoors. You know, you buy a, a package of fajita meat and some vegetables and throw it in your cooler, and then you get up there and you have your wok and your volcano, and it just works absolutely perfect. This is a 14-inch wok, slides right down in there. Whenever you're doing wok, wok cooking, you want a lot of heat. Uh, that's one of the key ingredients to, to using a wok. This burner will produce a lot of heat. It's about, it's just shy of 20,000 BTU. It's 19,500 BTU, so it produces a lot of heat. Uh, so you can do a walk, and then uh, another obvious advantage is the ability to do a Dutch oven. So if you're doing propane, you just set your Dutch oven right on top of that deflector plate, which as you can see, it doesn't sit down quite as far because the burner's in there. The heat's still going to come up around the outside and heat the entire pot, but then another thing that's going to come with your kit if you get the propane version is this uh, both models have it, right? Have the lid? Yeah. So whatever you, you purchase will have this lid, and then you can just throw that over the top, and what that's going to do is trap that heat and make it so there's no heat loss. What you're going to see is that you're going to have to have your propane on low, 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 almost as low as it can go, because you'll be at 300 degrees just with a teeny tiny flame because of the way it traps heat. So where do you adjust the propane? Propane is adjusted right here. Gotcha. So there's just that little needle valve. Once you've got it hooked up, it's uh, just right there, away from the flame, so you don't have to worry about getting burned. You can just kind of sit back here and adjust it. Uh, one of the fun things about this lid, you can see it has a little hole on top. That's going to allow a little bit of air to escape. And you want to open that up when you, when you are using it so, so air can get out. But then you can take a little stick thermometer, uh, you know, the pointy ones with the round thermometer on the end, and you can actually put that right in there, and then you can watch your temperature, which is a great way to do it. Right here, the handle? Yeah. It gets a little hot sometimes. I've never had it to the point where it's caused any problems. You can usually grab it on the outside or something. This is, this is a spun fiberglass material, and it's got the um, foil deflector on the inside. So it does a pretty good job of not getting real hot. Uh, its, its main purpose is just to kind of reflect that and keep it rotating, and, and it does a, a great job of doing just that. Uh, so that's, that's how you set it up for propane, and it's really simple. The other uh, great thing that you're going to get with your kit is a set of flexible skewers. And they come in a package like this. Uh, and obviously, we went for the flexible variety because when you have a uh, circular surface, you know, sometimes it can be challenging if you have stick ones to make, you know, you get 10 kebabs on this side and, and you know, 12 in the middle. So uh, we wanted to try to eliminate that. And what you do is load this up with food. You can actually put the food on and then marinate it. And then you can just pull it right out of the bag and then throw it right on the volcano. And now it allows you to wrap that around the edge. So a lot of times, like with my family, I have uh, four kids. So we don't eat a ton of food. But I'll cook two big steaks in the middle. And then I'll put the vegetables on the skewers and wrap those around the outside. And so I can cook kind of multiple things uh, at the same time. This just allows you to really maximize your cooking surface. Uh, so it's a great tool to have on hand. Um, so lots of ways to cook with a volcano. You can Dutch oven, which is, honestly, that's kind of where what the product was originally most popular for is Dutch oven cooking. Uh, it allowed people to um, put the Dutch oven in a position where it was not affected by the weather. Um, it was really self-contained. It's clean and easy. And in most cases, you don't need to put briquettes on top. Because, uh, let me show you once again, um, because this sits down inside, 
all of the heat in order to leave has to come up around the outside of the pot. So it heats the entire oven, which is a, a, the reason why people use a Dutch oven is because it's a very even way to cook. Uh, and with a volcano, unless you're doing something like a cobbler, um, you, you typically don't have to put briquettes on top at all. And then once again with the lid, that just makes that process even more efficient. Uh, so Dutch oven is a great way. I showed you how the wok works and the skewers. You can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. Like uh, if you are doing cobbler, it requires a, a lot of top heat. Uh, so I use you know six briquettes on top, four on the bottom. Throw the lid on, and and that's it, which is really easy. Uh, and um, other things you can do. For instance, we were at the Self Reliance Expo. Uh, I don't know if any of you made it to that a, a couple weeks ago. Um, there was a lady in the booth next to us that was canning the entire time uh, using the volcano and a regular canning pot. Um, so you can can with the volcano. She was doing it right on a plastic table all day long, which is quite impressive. People kept walking by and, and wanting to touch it and see what was going on. And that's kind of the neat part about it is she's canning all day long. And you can still come up and put your hand on the outside of the volcano. You get up here, it gets a little hotter. Uh, but down here in this parts where uh, you're worried about, it stays very, very cool. And that's once again due to the way that it moves the air. Um, what she was canning beans and peas and apples and yeah I don't know I'm not a big canner uh, she could have been doing all sorts of things and I wouldn't have known it but uh yeah it was a pressure canner yes yeah so uh yeah that's a, another big advantage uh, with the volcano yeah? yeah great good question uh, if you're grilling obviously you're probably going to get some some drippage most of, of the uh, grease drippings are going to fall in your deflector plate. And almost always, it pretty much burns off. You know, you're probably going to be left with some black char on the deflector plate. And that's really easy. You just pull that off and wipe it off. This is going to be a dirty thing. And that's just part of the gig. Um, the good part about it is in your bag, there's a little um, accessory slot here. So, you know, if this is dirty, you don't want to dirty everything else up, you can just throw that in there and kind of keep it separate. Um, and then if there does happen to uh, be some stuff that makes it through the, through the slots there, or, or if you don't have the deflector plate on, the cleanup on the volcano is actually really easy. Um, all you do is simply collapse it, and then you can just go ahead and dump it out. And then if you wanted to, you know, you can tap it out is, is a good way to do it, shake it out, then just take a rag and you can wipe it out. You can even use a little soap and water. This part of the, of the volcano is not protected with, with paint or powder coating. So this is susceptible to you know, rusting if it does get wet. Is the carbon steel? It's still, yeah. What Rolled. Is the, plate? Is that or uh, the deflector plate is just carbon steel, yeah. So it's not protected either. Uh, all the grills are, are nickel plated, but the, but the deflector plate is just still. I do, yeah. Everything, everything that's not coated, I recommend seasoning. So the same way you would season a Dutch oven, you could season this uh, volcano. So maybe the first couple times. In fact, when you get it out of the box, it'll have a little bit of a grease seasoning on it. That's something that we put uh, in at the factory so that it, you, you know, it's preserved until the time you need it. There's a lot of people that buy these and don't touch them ever, you know, in case there's an emergency. We want to make sure that it's preserved and it's safe. So if you see a little grease in there, that's what it is. It's a preservative. Just go ahead and go about your cooking, and then it'll actually start the seasoning process. When you're done, as it's cooling down, it cools off really quick. So um, seasoning when you're done cooking is, is kind of tough. But before you start cooking, just wipe some, some vegetable oil in there and, and you know, five or six times, and you'll have a very smooth black surface in there that's, that uh, eliminates any worry of rusting. Uh, so any more questions before I kind of move on to another little part here? All right, good. So let me uh, show you now another way that you can cook, which is something that we kind of have just come out with, with the uh, introduction of the lid. We've kind of mastered the art of learning to bake with the volcano without even having to use the Dutch oven, which is kind of neat. Uh, so once again, we'll just go ahead and set that up, and then I'll explain to you that process. Because uh, one of the challenges that a lot of other cookers or, or stoves in general have is, is that they have no way to bake. So you have to bring along something like a Dutch oven that's, that can be, quite frankly, big and heavy. 
I, I take my Dutch oven with me when I've got my pop-up trailer because it fits right in. But if, I don't, if I'm not taking my trailer, it doesn't come with me uh, because it's, it's too awkward. I usually got my hands full of kids and other things. So uh, having a big, heavy Dutch oven isn't always uh, the simplest thing. So being able to not bring a Dutch oven is, is very advantageous. Um, so if, you're, if you want to bake like a loaf of bread or a plate of brownies or biscuits, you know, like I said, typically you got to bring the Dutch oven. Uh, but what you can do with, with the volcano is you can actually put your briquettes right on the bottom just like normal. Um, in fact, recently I baked an entire loaf of bread with six briquettes, which is just a teeny amount of, of fuel. So you put your briquettes in there. I like to put this deflected plate in there next. And then you take a regular bread pan, you know, after the dough is raised, put it in there, and then you throw your lid on, and now you've essentially created an oven. Uh, for the six briquettes, it took about 30 minutes, 35, right in there. Uh, if you do it with eight, it takes about 20, 25 minutes, and it's just super easy. Uh, that's kind of the neat part about it. And there's plenty of space for it to rise. You know, it was, it's very impressive uh, how well it works for baking. And that's due to the lid, because that does such a good job of trapping that heat. It essentially creates a convection oven, uh, because it's just circulating just the right amount of air, and it really keeps that hot. So uh, once again, a stick thermometer is almost a must because a lot of people don't realize how hot it does get in there. So if you can put a little stick thermometer in there and, and kind of watch that temperature, once again, if it's getting hot, just shut that air down. You know, if it's not hot enough, open it up, and that's, that's the way you control the amount of heat. Um, when you're using propane, so before I move off charcoal, uh, with charcoal, it's, it's simple to use just about any kind of thing you'd put in your oven, you know, uh, a little brownie pan, whatever you want to use, anything you can fit on here will work perfectly. You can also put it just on top of the, if you're doing like a plate of brownies that don't have to raise a lot, you can just put it right on this top uh, grill and then, and then put your lid on and you're okay. Uh, you don't want to do that with the bread because it'll end up touching the lid with, when it raises. Um, so you can bake just about anything you can bake at home. You can uh, bake with your volcano, you know, wherever you might be, which is a great thing to have around. A full-size bread pan, you can't do more than one. Uh, if you have the smaller ones, you sure can. The little, uh, what are they, six-inch ones? Yeah, those you can fit two in, no problem. But a regular 10-inch, is that what they are? Eight-inch, something like that. Uh, whatever the regular ones are, uh, just one will fit in there perfectly. Um, and then for propane, remember, you take that out, put your burner in. Now, uh, one of the challenges when baking with propane is that it's really hot and you're not very far away from whatever you're baking. So you gotta be careful uh, how you deal with that. If you're baking like a, a plate of brownies that, that you know, don't require a ton of heat, you wanna be pretty quick with it, um, I'm gonna recommend something that, that uh, you wouldn't find out anywhere else. This is a, uh, a nifty trick. Uh, what you wanna do is take a, a piece of tin foil about this long and then fold it in half and fold it in fourths uh, so it covers about this much of this deflector plate. And then just kind of lay that piece of tin foil over there and honestly cover up almost all the holes. And the reason why we're doing that is, is so that the, all the heat's not just hitting the bottom of the pan. It's kicking it out of the sides and then it's coming up around and circulating. So it kind of forces that air out instead of right to what you're cooking. Because you'll, you, if you don't do that, what you'll find is, is the bottom will get a lot hotter than the top just because that's where the main heat source is going. So if you're baking with propane, I highly recommend, you can use other things, but tin foil is just simple and easy. Just wrap that around that deflector plate with maybe this much of the edges showing, or not at all, because it'll find a way out, no problem. And then you can go ahead and, and put your top pan on. Uh, you know, biscuits can be a little challenging because they just, they're pretty easy to burn. Uh, so just two weeks ago, we, we had to go through a little bit of a trial and error, trying to figure out the best way to suggest to people how to bake with, with propane because it gets so hot uh, that you gotta, you gotta be real careful. So uh, we went through a bunch of processes. Finally, we determined that tin foil is by far the best way to do it. Uh, just put your tin foil on there. Then you can put your uh, biscuits right on top in a regular pan, you know, whatever you wanna use, which is great. The challenging part is gonna be, once, once again, to make sure you keep that heat low enough. Now this burner, like I said earlier, kicks out 20,000 BTU, which is a lot. Now that's gonna be 
just perfect for canning because you want a ton of heat. It's going to be great for wok, which is a ton of heat. But when you're baking, you don't need that much. So you really got to, you know, keep an eye on that, crank it down. So you just barely have any, any blue coming out that burner. Uh, and that will produce, like I said earlier, about 300 degrees uh, with just the tiniest amount of, of uh, fuel coming out. And then go ahead and cover it with the lid. Put your little stick thermometer in there to make sure you're not getting too, um, too much heat there, and then you can watch it. And if you see you are getting too much heat, you know, you just grab your burner and just kind of turn that down as much as you can uh, without letting it go out, and, and it'll work great. Um, not many other things out there that you can do this much with. You can bake, you know, you can um, Dutch oven, wok, uh, grill, any kind of pot, pan, can, you know, whatever, whatever thing you have to use. The volcano will cook it, and not, not only will it cook it, but it will cook it extremely efficiently. And once again, going back to the propane, if you're having to keep your propane on way low, that means your fuel usage is going to be just minimal. Those little one-pound bottles, she was, canning on, she was canning all day at the, at the Self-Reliance Expo. She was lasting about six hours just on one can, one little can of propane while she was canning, which canning requires quite a bit of fuel. I've, I've used, I think I've gone about eight hours on one little green tank cooking all day long, baking. Um, you can actually convert this thing into a smoker uh, as well. That requires a little more ingenuity, uh, but it works very well for smoking. So all day long I had it going. Uh, I went about eight hours, which is a full work day, and I still had gas left in the, in the bottle. So it's extremely efficient with propane. It's extremely efficient with charcoal, and then it has the option of cooking with wood. And wood can be a challenging thing to cook with because, you know, oftentimes it just burns too fast and then it's done. But what you need to be able to do with wood is you need to be able to cut off that oxygen to maintain those coals. And that's what the volcano will do for you. Uh, once you get the wood really going and, and it's to the point where it's kind of turned to ash, shut that air off and then you can actually cook with wood, which, which like I mentioned earlier, is not a real easy task. It takes a little bit of practice and learning, um, but it's an option. And uh, whenever... We're talking emergency preparedness, you want options. You want to be able to store multiple fuels and you want to be able to use multiple fuels. Um, and, and the volcano will, will provide you just that. Um, so charcoal, propane, wood. Uh, I've used little wood pellets to use those. Um, obviously they'll fall through the grate. So once again, we'll go back to our friend tinfoil. Just put tinfoil right on the top poke some holes in it so the, air can, or so the air can get underneath it, and then you can fill that full of, of pellets and you're good to go. So it's going to cook with whatever fuel source you have, uh, with very little exception, um, and it's going to do it very efficiently. Then, when you're done, obviously collapses right down. Everything fits in the storage bag. I have one in a storage bag right here. Weighs about, with, with propane, it's about 25 pounds. Uh, if you get the one without propane, it's going to be closer to 19 pounds. Um, so it's, it's not light. It's something that's heavy duty enough to, to withstand years of use, but it's also not so heavy that you can't take it with you. You know, we all have some of the bigger cookers that, that have been around for a number of years. Uh, I rarely use mine for the one reason, because it's so heavy and awkward. Uh, once again, I always have my arm full of kids or, or other things that are associated with having a family. So... Um, it's nice to be able to grab something that's real simple, one hand, be able to take off, fits in the trunk of your car, under the front seat of your truck, you know, whatever um, you have. It's just simple and easy to, to take with you. Um, so that, that's kind of everything about the volcano. Any, any questions? Have you ever used the fuel quick fire? Yeah. In fact, uh, we, we sold that for quite a while ourselves. We private labeled it and sold it. Um, works very well. What we sold it for, we packaged it in little pouches, and we actually just used it to start charcoal. That was kind of more of, of the uh, reason for using it was to start briquettes. So uh, when you do that, you actually pour it right on the bottom pan, just, just a, a little pile about like that. You light that on, on fire, get it going, and then you can build your briquettes right around that, and, about 10, and you can walk away, come back in 10 minutes, and your briquettes are ready to go. So it's an excellent charcoal starter. Uh, no, I've never, I've never done that, not for any particular reason other than I just haven't. You know, uh, it would work fine. Any, anything that's going to burn will burn great in the volcano, once again, because of the way it, it moves that air. And especially with the quick fire, you know, it, it doesn't require a ton of air. 
So you can really uh, control how much you, you let in there with, with the vent system. Any more questions? Please. How much? How much? That, that's a good question. Do we have video only? What's that? Yeah. A couple of options if you're interested in getting it. Um, we have, if you go to our website, we sell them there. This, this is our main uh, corporate office, so we actually don't have inventory of them here. So if you wanted to get one tonight, then you definitely can. You just put it in Will Call. We'll be ready for it tomorrow to pick it up. Other option is we have, you know a little bit about our company, we have a number of consultants nationwide that sell our products. Um, actually, I think we have a consultant here tonight. Dave, Dave's a consultant. Um, he, he has fantastic pricing on this as well. You can get it for but if you get it through, so you can talk to Dave as well. But if you go to our website, the two kits that we offer, well, we sell everything individually. So you can buy all the accessories individually by themselves. Um, and then we sell two kits. We have the propane cook kit and then just the regular non-propane kit. The propane kit comes with everything comes with the adapter, the cookbook, the skewer, um, the lid, and it's $247 for everything. And then the non-propane kit is $164, and it comes with everything except for the propane accessory. So th that's, you know, retail on our website. Um, our our uh, consultants, like I say, have, they, they have good prices on as well that, that would be worth talking to them about as well. So yeah. that's very good. And, and thank you for pointing out some of these things. I, I did forget to tell you about the cookbook that you'll get with, with whatever package you purchase. This is actually very nice. It's, it's not only a cookbook, but it's also a technical manual. So this was written by the inventor of the volcano who's very passionate about it. The first half is, is very technical as far as how to use it, how to use it with charcoal and wood. It doesn't contain much information on propane because it was actually written prior to pro propane before we added the propane. But it has a, like a, a table of how many briquettes to use and how long they will last and how to have your vent system open and, and all those different things that, that, you know, if you're not real familiar with it, those are the kind of things you want to know. Uh, so it's very valuable uh, that way. And then it tells you how to use different cooking utilities, whether you're frying or Dutch oven or wok or, or grilling. It'll, it'll kind of explain to you the process. And then the second half is all recipes specific to the volcano. It'll walk you step by step through multiple recipes using multiple cooking utilities as well. You know, I've never done pizza recipe. However, man, I, I've I thought about that just this last week. I need to try that because it will it'll be absolutely perfect, especially bacon. You know, you can just set that right on that top grill uh, and it'll bake it just just perfectly. But I have not tried it yet. It, when, when you try it, because I think you're gonna. Uh, make sure and cover that deflector plate with, with foil because you're really going to want to spread that heat out, especially with the pizza, uh, you know, because they, they have a tendency to burn on the bottom pretty easy. So you want to make sure you cover that with foil and it'll work perfectly. And if you're doing charcoal, no worries. Uh, about 12 briquettes will give you, you know, 400 degrees. Uh, so, you know, you put 12 briquettes in there, throw your pizza on top, and you'll be set. When you're cooking with briquettes, when you're baking with briquettes, for something like you know pizza or bread that's actually exposed, you want to make sure that they're ready to cook. Sometimes people will use starting fluid or or maybe um, charcoal starter fluid uh, or maybe briquettes that have it built in already. You want to make sure they're they're starting to turn gray uh, before you start cooking. Otherwise, some of that you know smell can get into what, to your food. So just wait till it's gray and then you can go ahead and start cooking. Um. Question about uh, briquettes. Mm -hmm. There's, uh, our, my experience is, is a little more limited, but, but the, the gentleman who invented this, Richard Botker, he's, he's done a, just massive amounts of testing. And he says, by far, Kingsford is the best. Uh, just, they always produce the same amount of heat with each briquette. They have good, good uh, si they're all the same size. They all kind of do the same thing, and they're just high quality. Now, you're always going to find an off-brand. You know, somebody probably makes you know, an off-brand of, of uh, Kingsford. Um, that'll work fine, but there are other ones out there that are, you know, maybe they've tried to make them bigger or, or whatever the case may be. Sometimes the, the actual composition of the briquette is not, is not the same, and that will cause it to burn quite different. So all the recipes in this are specific to using something similar to a Kingsford. If you use the bigger ones, you know, that's going to produce something different. If you use a cheaper brand, it probably won't kick out as much heat or last as long. 
So to answer your question, yeah, there is a difference, but between brands, it's a little hard to tell. It's something that you just kind of, kind of test out yourself, you know. The key is to make sure you just buy whatever ones you want at times when they have them on sale. I mean, you can buy two big bags of, of Kingsford for 10 bucks, oftentimes. Uh, on that note, one of the things that we tell people about the volcano when you're talking storage and, and you know, if you want to be able to, to cook all these great foods, uh, you want to make sure you have fuel on hand. Um, charcoal is by far the easiest to store. When you're storing charcoal, there's a couple things to keep in mind. First of all, you want to keep it airtight. If you have like even a regular bag of, of Kingsford, after a couple years it oxidizes and it reduces the amount of usable fuel. So the, the actual charcoal will start to oxidize and it won't burn as well. So you want to try to keep it airtight. But that's pretty easy, you know. Uh, you, can, you can buy the, the syllable, you know, little five-gallon five, five gallon buckets or, or even the larger ones to keep your briquettes in. And what we tell people is about 10 to 15 bags, 10 if you have a lid, which, which all these packages are sold with a lid, 15 if you don't have a lid. That's kind of the, the efficiency difference. But either 10 or 15 bags of charcoal will cook you one hot meal a day for a year. And that's not much. You're looking at, you know, 60 bucks to, to really be in a position where you have all the fuel you need to, to cook at least one hot meal a day for an entire year. Uh, and a actually, when you're, when you're looking at, at the foods that Shelf Reliance sells, the Thrive, Thrive line there, uh, because of the way they process it, it doesn't take even that much uh, because it, it heats up so easily. Um, so uh, you can actually reduce that number. And, and uh, that, that's the best part about having something that, pr that will produce or that will allow you to use multiple fuel sources is, yeah, you can go store a couple buckets of charcoal and go store, you know, some of the little bottles of propane and then, you know, hopefully you got a tree in the backyard that you can cut up if, if uh, worse comes to worse uh, or the neighbor's fence or something. Um, but whatever you have, it's going to cook it and it's going to cook it very efficiently. And there's a lot of competition out there uh, as far as preparedness cookers go, but there's nothing else out there that will do that many fuel sources. And uh, there's very few things out there that will cook um, for your entire family. A lot of the other little uh, other um, stoves that are out there are small, or you know the, the cooking service is small. They don't allow you to do things like a Dutch oven. I mean, you can cook for numerous people in one 12-inch Dutch oven, uh, which, as you saw, uh, and I'll show you once again, they fit right down inside. Almost goes in the whole way. It catches on these lips that you see here. So. Uh, it's going to be a very, very effective way to cook Dutch oven. Once again, you know, in Utah, we oftentimes see wind, you know, because there's canyons everywhere. Um, that's the other great thing about the volcano is it really kind of keeps all the elements out, especially if you're using the lid. There's no way for that air to get in except for f these holes on the bottom, which you control by the vent system. Um, so out here in the west uh, or anywhere else where they have wind, it's another big advantage. And then... You know, you don't have to deal with the headache of, of you know, leftover briquettes on the ground or, or whatever uh, other way you've, you've dealt with in the past. All you do is just collapse that guy down, dump him in the trash can, and you're good to go. Uh, and like I mentioned earlier, this thing cools off very quickly. So when you're done cooking, literally maybe five minutes, and it's good to go. Uh, if you're in a hurry, you know, it's a simple thing to have around to, to just pack up and, and take off. So very efficient, very portable, uh, very versatile, not only in what you can cook, but what you can cook with. And that's, that's the volcano. Any more questions? Thank you all very much for being here. Appreciate it.